In this next piece of chapter two, we want to look at chemical and physical properties and chemical and physical changes. In this section, we want to basically take what we talked about with elements and compounds and now talk about the ways we can change those elements and compounds and the basic properties of those elements and compounds. We'll start with the properties. There are two types of properties. There are physical properties and there are chemical properties. Physical properties are going to be those things that are observable, measurable about the substance, but are not based on the actual chemistry uh, reactions that that substance has, the way that you can change that compound. It's more the basic properties of the compound. So another way to think of this would be the physical properties are characteristics of a substance that can change without the substance becoming a new compound or new element. Observable physical properties might be things like color, odor, texture, clarity, taste, or the state at room temperature. You can change the state of something from solid to liquid to gas or vice versa and still be the same substance. There are also measurable physical properties that we will look at, such as density, which we talked about in the last chapter. The density of our new red potato was the same all the way through the potato, and that density was unique to the potato and the state that it was in. Melting or freezing point. We refer to these as the same because it's the same temperature, the temperature which something becomes goes from solid to liquid or from liquid to solid, depending on whether we're adding heat or taking heat out of the system. Boiling point, the temperature which a liquid changes to a gas or condensation when it goes back from a gas to a liquid as we're removing heat. And even the change from gas straight to solid or vice versa, the sublimation or deposition point, the temperature which a solid changes straight to gas or straight from uh, gas back to solid. We'll see this with iodine. Iodine will go from a solid straight to a gas at normal pressure conditions at a relatively low temperature. And you can think of dry ice as another example of this. Dry ice, solid carbon dioxide will go straight to gas carbon dioxide. Chemical properties describe the composition of a substance, how many molecules are put together, and the way that those molecules behave when reacting with other compounds. So for example, water has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So we can describe chemical property of water as its composition, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. We can also describe the way it reacts with other compounds to form new substances. One of the common things we're going to want to identify is when things make chemical or physical changes and understand the difference between these two. So physical change might be when a substance physical makeup changes, but there's no change in the actual chemical structure, the bonding, the actual individual atoms and molecules. Usually physical changes are things that can be reversed. If we have a solid substance and we crush it into smaller pieces, that would be a physical change. We're not changing the substance at all, we're just grinding it into smaller pieces. If we take and mix two substances together, mixing is one that's actually confusing to a lot of people, but mixing is also a physical change. When we take two substances and mix them together, they're not actually interacting with each other and we could separate them back apart. You could also think of other physical changes, um, such as changing the state of something. If we any of our phase changes, solid, liquid, gas, or vice versa, solid straight to gas in the case of sublimation, any of those physical ch would be physical changes. A chemical change is when something changes into a completely different substance. We form a substance that is different from the original substance we started with. So we're changing the actual element or compound, generally compounds, that we are working with. The more commonly referred to these as chemical reactions, and they are not usually reversible. We can't usually go back to what we started with. Some examples of chemical changes would be any chemical reaction we deal with, or some more general cases, like for example, if you took sugar. If you heat sugar, it will start to melt at a low temperature, but at a higher temperature, it starts to burn and caramelize and actually form that um, golden color and then eventually black color. That burning of sugar is actually a chemical change. Most cooking is actually chemical changes that are taking place to the food. Last thing I want to do is look at a couple, just talk through a couple of examples of various chemical and physical changes. So let's say we had iron metal being melted. Melting of iron metal. That will be a physical change because we're going from a solid to a liquid. And that's a change of state is just a physical change. 
we said iron was combined with oxygen to rust. That's iron reacting with oxygen to form iron oxide. That's going to be a chemical change. Wood burning. If generally anything burning, that's a combustion reaction. That's going to be a chemical change. And finally, some, a rock being broken into small pieces. That's going to be a physical change. You're just breaking the size of it, maybe the texture a little bit, but you're not changing the actual substance. There'll be a lot of examples of these to go through on the WebAssign, and we'll talk about a number of examples in class.